Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your man SDP. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, guys. Today I'm going to be reacting to Patrick CC. Uh, he had just dropped this video called Three Simple Words Made Lil John $33.3 million. Um, I think this is my first time reacting to Patrick CC. I've watched his videos before, like on my own time, but this is my first time like reacting to one of his videos. And uh, yeah, man, I wanted to check out this video real quick. Uh, it's about 12 minutes. We're gonna go ahead and watch this joint, and uh, yeah, man, shout out to Patrick. Uh, he makes some really dope videos. So if you haven't checked uh, checked out his channel yet, go ahead and do so. And uh, without further ado, man, let's get right into the video. Yeah, yo. Yeah, yo. In Lil Jon's most successful song of all time, he says 12 words total. In his second most successful song of all time, he says just 19 unique words. But truthfully, most people would associate him with the three most basic words in the English language. Yeah! What? Okay! Man, the thing about Lil Jon, bro, like, I remember when his, his songs were popping back when I was a kid. Man, and uh, yeah, these are some pretty iconic words right here that he says. Yeah, what? Okay. That's crazy. Don't three words right there, bro. <laughs> now, people often criticize rappers for having small vocabularies on the basis that less words equals Playboy less Cardi. talent. But Lil Jon isn't a rapper. And someone already. I ain't gonna lie, man. Playboy Cardi about to be dropping a new album. And I'm excited for it, bro. I ain't, I ain't even gonna lie, bro. I'm a, I'm a Cardi fan for real. I, but he's supposed to be dropping this album this month. Build a he's supposed to be dropping this album this month, so. Legacy as iconic as his on such few words is actually more difficult, especially when you consider he kind of did this all by accident. Stay hydrated. Lil Jon is known for his energy, hype. I don't know why. The The uh, headphones are messing up. Playing, getting drunk, get the fuck out the club. He carried that same energy throughout his early years. In high school, he loved punk rock music, spending his weekends in mosh pits at Agent Orange shows. And considering his love what? for partying, what's more important to a party than a DJ? At age six, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I don't know too much about Lil John, but I was not expecting him to um be at rock concerts and everything, bro. That's crazy. I mean, it's not really crazy, but it's. Unexpected. I didn't. I wasn't expecting that, bro. Teen Lil John taught himself how to DJ in his parents' basement. They used to let him throw his own parties under their supervision rather than let him be in the streets somewhere. And that proved to be the right decision mm. because as Lil John got into his 20s, his skills would impress someone who would change his life forever. John landed a regular DJ gig at Club Phoenix in downtown Atlanta. It was at Club Phoenix where he was scouted by rapper, producer, and executive Jermaine Dupree. Although Dupree was impressed by his DJing, he actually wanted him to be an A&R. When it came to A&R, all I could think about was Lil John because he was the person in the clubs. He knew people. DJs knew him. I had to hire him. And mm. A&R's job is essentially to recruit and discover talent. I mean, Lil John has some clout, man. Talent for the labels to sign. But So So Def was not even close to a well-established label. And Lil John didn't see this as a promising career path. He actually was considering enrolling in Georgia State University and even took some courses at Fort Macpherson through Georgia Military College. But Dupree greenlit an album for $100,000 and gave Lil Jon full creative control. So a music career was on the horizon. With that money, Lil Jon linked with some of the best producers, DJs, and artists in the underground Atlanta scene to create the So So Deaf Bass All-Stars album. As you can imagine, it was an album full of dancey fun bangers, perfect for the club. You probably recognize track two. Club bangers. Oh yeah. My Boo by Ghost Town DJs became known for the Running Man Challenge, Man. a viral dance that- Y'all remember that, bro? The Running Man Challenge? That was a crazy time, bro. <laughs> Everybody and their mama was doing this little dance, bro. That's crazy, I remember that. Dominated the internet in 2016 bringing it to number 27 on the Billboard Hot 100 20 years later. Lil Jon produced that song two decades earlier. However, in 1996, the album That's was crazy. They also brought that pretty back, popular. man. Climbed to wow. the ninth spot on the R&B and hip-hop chart, solidifying Lil Jon's presence and influence in the music industry. Jon was known all around the country for turning up clubs with the songs he produced. Now it was time for him to jump on the mic. 
the group Lil John and the East Side Boys was formed with him and his two childhood friends, Big Sam and Lil Bo. We'd be the rowdy crowd in the club. So Lil John told me and Bo we were going to do a song, Who You Wit. I was like, okay, we'll do a song and that'll be it. And a couple weeks later, they came back and said, we want you guys to do an album. So we did an album. I don't know why he chose us. I'm just glad he did. Lil John and the East Side Boys put out their first record independently starting with Get Crunk, Who You Wit, the album in 1997. The album was jam-packed with records that talked about shaking ass and getting lit, complemented by production containing yeah, party simple synth melodies, repetitive claps, and lots of bass. They ended up selling 100,000 singles and 40,000 albums on their own. They had the underground in a chokehold because their records were fun. They reduced the idea of having intricate verses to fun chants that everyone in the club would memorize before the song was over. Put Yo Hood Up, Move Bitch, and Bia Bia were perfect examples of this. But even still, by it's this crazy. point, Lil Jon never lit. considered himself a rapper, which is ironic because this was arguably the most rapping he ever did, and would ever do in his career. Crunk music was about a hot beat, a hot hook, and something people could chant along with. Crunk is best defined as a fusion of Miami bass and Memphis buck roughneck chants backed with 808 beats and humming bass. Lil Jon was able to fuse the energy of bass music with street rap and came up with Crunk. But most of us were introduced to Lil Jon in 2002 with the track Get Low alongside the Ying Yang twins on the album Kings of Crunk. In the early 2000s, the music video was more important than ever. Many of you probably remember the days of turning on MTV and just seeing what new songs would pop up. Man, forget look at the drip that people used to wear, bro. Like, oh man, I probably paused on some cheeks. <laughs> but uh, man, but you, you see like their jacket and everything, bro? Like, or their shirts, the little jerseys. Uh, baggy pants man like man that was a style back then get low showed lil john's over the top outfit cane and signature iced out cup full of who knows what this video sent the song all the way to number two on the billboard hot 100 lil john became the most requested artist for radio djs and since he was a dj himself they were more than happy to play his tracks shake that monkey peaked at 84 on the billboard hot 100 salt shaker peaked at number nine Damn peaked at number four, which was an anthem to taunt your ops in the club. No 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 2003, Lil Jon was on fire, and everyone in the industry wanted him on their song if they wanted it to go crazy in the club. And Usher mm. was the first artist to truly capitalize on that. At the time, Usher was an R&B sensation who had slow and sensual songs topping the charts, but he wasn't exactly being played in the clubs. Lil Jon was about to change that when they linked up and made a song called Yeah, with the hook focusing on one of Jon's iconic ad-libs repeating 12 times. But they needed a rapper to certify this as a club smash, so they sent it over to Ludacris. Lil Jon sent me the record, you know, with Usher's lyrics on there. Another record instantly, as soon as I heard it, I was in my house in Atlanta. Instantly, I was like, this sh is out of here. It took me no time to write my verse for it. And I, I was like, this is such a smash, I gotta be on more than just a verse. Yeah spent an astonishing what? 12 weeks at the number one spot on the Billboard Hot 100. Yeah is a true anthem of the early 2000s and at every awkward oh, middle school man. dance. It was on every list of the top songs of the decade and is easily one of the most iconic hip hop club records of all Bruh. time. From there, That's he had legendary, a man. success with songs named after his ad libs, Let's Go and OK. He also had Kulo with Pitbull, Lovers and Friends, and What You Gon' Do. Whether it was a song to get the gangsters hype or the ladies to dance, Lil Jon had the music industry in the palm of his hands. But it wasn't technically his music that solidified Lil Jon as a cultural phenomenon. It was Dave Chappelle. On season two, episode Ooh. six of The Chappelle Show, Dave what premiered Chappelle a skit do? called A Moment in the Life of Lil Jon. Are you checking any luggage today, sir? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> you the bags yourself. Yeah! Them ad libs, man. What? I'll never forget the morning after this episode aired. It seemed like everyone in my school was mimicking this skit, yelling what, yeah, and okay. Because of Dave Chappelle, people who had no idea who Lil Jon was knew him as the guy who said what, yeah, and okay. A moment in the life of Lil Jon became a go-to recurring bit for Dave's show. He reimagined the skit in season two, episode seven, and episode 13 alongside the real Lil Jon. Keep in mind, the Chappelle show what? averaged 3.1 million viewers per episode in 2004, just shy of Saturday Night Live's 3.7 million, but his cultural impact Impact reached far and beyond that. At the time, Dave Chappelle was comedy. Whatever he thought was funny, America thought was funny. 
and Lil Jon was one of the most successful bits he ever did. I personally think Dave Chappelle's still the funniest comedian, bro. John even says Dave changed to this his day. life. I was talking about it to him that night. You know, every time I um, see him, I tell him, you know, like that night, I was like, you ruined my life. Now, the reason why Lil Jon jokingly says Dave ruined his life is because of, well, this. What? Nigga, you sound like a bird. Oh, he's starting to get annoyed. He started getting annoyed, bro, from the fans and stuff. That you get so annoyed with that fans scream to you. What? Oh man. What is the most annoying <laughs> ever? Lil John. Oh man, that's crazy. It's like um, they know him for that, bro. Like, dang, I see, I see what they're talking about, bro. Nah, I can see why he'll be annoyed by it. John was kind of turned into a meme which definitely helped his brand recognition, yeah. but was likely very annoying over the years to have random people shout at you obnoxiously when you're at the airport or dinner with your family. To yeah, I would see how worse, that's annoying. The crunk era was dying quickly. For the next few years, Lil Jon had some popular songs in rotation, such as Girl Fight, Snap Your Fingers, and Go to Church. Although the songs made during the snap slash crunk era are nostalgic to look back on, the subgenre was very one-dimensional, and it's honestly surprising how long it remained popular. Songs were repetitive, with basic call and response chants, the beats all started to sound the same, and artists lacked the versatility necessary to maintain a fan base. And although Lil Jon was a pioneer of the genre, he needed to pivot or he would get left behind. Since Jon was a producer, he was able to stay in the mix with people who were pushing the next sound. And as we approached the 2010s, we got this new wave of feel-good rap, pop, dance and cheesy electronic sounds coming from the likes of Flow Rida, Pitbull, and LMFAO. These iconic uh, songs became timeless wedding LMFAO, and I remember that. And Lil Jon's iconic ad-libs and hype energy fit right into these tunes. Crazy, the anthem, Do You Remember, and you can't forget the legendary Shots. I bet most of you watching remember Lil Jon from this era of his career. And if you think the Crunk era went fast, these came and went even faster. One homecoming, bro, what? one prom, and a wedding, and you never want to- Patrick, you not lying, bro. It was there, and then it went away in a snap of a finger, bro. Like, that was I hear mad fast. Over again. Music was changing faster than ever as we approached the internet age. Than ever. As we passed 2010, EDM festivals started becoming bigger and bigger. EDM yep. DJs were often playing Lil Jon and Pitbull's songs, Crazy and the Anthem. You also have to remember Lil Jon at his core is a DJ. So he was very curious to enter the new wave of open format DJs, which is basically just a DJ who plays any and all genres rather than just sticking to one. In 2011, he collaborated with Laidback Luke and Steve Aoki on the track Turbulence, which was a huge anthem that year. He started going to massive festivals and performing alongside the DJs he knew. Plus, many upcoming EDM producers in all subgenres, from dubstep to Dirty Dutch House to EDM Trap, would often sample Lil Jon. His three iconic ad-libs were the perfect vocal chops to complement the energy that these EDM subgenres displayed. Where people often use this vocal shot from the song I'm the Ish by DJ Class. This was the go-to sample right before the beat drop in like 50% of EDM songs that year. But the one EDM track that changed his life was one sent over from DJ Snake. Snake sent Lil Jon a track that had a sample from Redman that said, this the countdown, bang the underground. He wanted Lil Jon to just re-say this phrase, but Jon didn't think the sample mm. fit the energy of the track. On his first listen, he just blurted out, turn down for what? and knew it was a smash. Turn Only Lil Jon can what? say four words into a mic and know that it's gonna be a hit record. He added Bruh. eight more words that most of you probably don't even care about. Fire up that loud, another round of shots. But DJ Snake didn't like it. Jon asked Nah, Snake, bro, it was the song, man. Turn down for what? Yeah, I remember this. To just trust <laughs> he started playing the song at their DJ sets and the crowd would go nuts. It was one of the few records I've ever had that when I played it in my sets, Every time another DJ came up to me like, yo, Begging. what is that? Yes. Let Begging. me get that. Let me get Begging. that. This song's popularity was also accelerated by Vine users, with the first lady even making a video to it. Turn up for what? <laughs> <laughs> Ten years after his first number oh, one man. song, Usher, Lil Jon went number one on the Billboard Hot Dance and Electronic chart for 12 weeks. One week for every word he said on the song. Lil Jon was already an icon in hip-hop. This record made him an icon in EDM. And these days, he has a much bigger presence there than in hip-hop. EDM DJs will mm. send him a record to scream one of his iconic phrases before the drop, and he takes 50% of the revenue for the song. And he deserves it, because a Lil Jon sample will always get people rowdy. Yeah, 
today, Lil Jon's life is pretty Dang. unpredictable. He's become a big fan of the side quest. He has a successful TV show on HGTV, where he showcased his unique vision and design expertise, surprising what? the world with his eye for interior aesthetics. I didn't even know he, he had his own, his own TV own show. Label, Little Jonathan Winery, that reflects his unique style and brought a touch of sophistication. Everybody be having their own little You might even wine catch him stuff. lecturing at prestigious universities such as Oxford. In music, the less words Lil Jon said, the more successful he was, and he secured a well-deserved legacy from that. But these days, he's got a lot more to say, and we owe it to him to listen. They're going to say that at my funeral. They're going to be like, he was a good man. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> what? He, man. he ain't lying. <laughs> man, he rest in peace. Okay! <laughs> I'm dead. Man, good video, Patrick. That was, uh, I don't know too much about Lil Jon, bro, but man, what a crazy come up of, of that, huh? But, uh... Yeah, bro, I'm glad he's doing good, man. And, uh, you know, still doing his thing. But, uh, man, that's it for the video, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys didn't enjoy, make sure you like and subscribe. I'm going to go ahead and see you guys next time. And peace out.